Night and Alba Charles here again with the Cypher Unlimited crew. We have our usual suspects of Spigs 18 or Anthony. We have AB or Alpha Dean. And Dean, what are we doing here today? Well, believe it or not, guys, we actually have somebody here who's been doing this stuff as long as I have. <laughs> Mr. John W.S. Martin from Dread Unicorn Games. You know, welcome, John. You know, this is Cypher Unlimited. We're happy to have you. And, uh, can't wait to talk to you about all the goodies that you've been doing over the last uh, 40 plus years. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a great time. Yeah. So uh, you want to go ahead and talk to John? Well, actually, John, can you tell us a little bit about yourself before we get started? Sure. Uh, like you said, I've been playing games since the 70s and I've uh, been enjoying them ever since. And I uh, <clears throat> decided that uh, I was going to actually publish some games. And so uh, a couple of years ago, I started and I started with Numenera. I was a backer of Numenera. And uh, I, I, my first adventure was The Sun Below, City on the Edge. Nice. Awesome. Nice stuff. So, Ant, let's get into into the fun and festivities. You want to talk to John a little bit? Yeah. First and foremost, John, welcome. Welcome to the CU. We're happy to have you. Um, we're happy to chat about gaming with you. So I guess the first question, you told us a little bit about yourself, but can you tell us about Dread Unicorn Games and, you know, how, how'd you get your start in role-playing games in the first place? In a really stupid way. Um, <laughs> That's the I, best way. <laughs> well, oh, I don't know. Oh. No, no, not in the best way. <laughs> do not copy what I did. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, uh, I, I guess I'm, been around the block or how do you say it i'm old and uh and so instead of taking my time and working my way up and g getting hired as a freelancer by 16 different companies uh, and creating a whole uh, uh thing like that i just went do it yourself you know <laughs> i publish i'm the layout guy i'm the i'm the art director i'm the r main writer for most of the products and uh, but i cannot edit <laughs> and I and I can't do art, but I but I can buy art and I can spec art. So, yeah. But uh, but if really, I think the right way to do it is 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 the you know try to get hired by a real company instead of doing it yourself. But I, I, I didn't want to wait. I just you know hey, I, I don't have that much time. Any way that works, you know, uh, you you caught our attention because you're putting out quality products, so you're doing something right. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, most definitely. It doesn't really matter, like, um, you know, maybe, like, I figure your your method is more of a brute force method. Yes. Rather than you're waiting, you're waiting. It's just, you know, I want it right now. I'm just going to keep doing it until it happens. And, <laughs> you know, if you have that if you have that yeah. persistence and uh, what you yes. call a dedication, then, huh, oh, kudos. <laughs> like, <laughs> He's a slave instead of a speaker. Exactly. <laughs> what? <laughs> What's your origin story for role playing games in general? How'd you get started playing and GMing? Oh, with the white box for the original Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, a friend uh, had me over his house, and we were old war gamers. We played Avalon Hill, Panzer Blitz, and games like that. And we were just like, hey, here, you don't play an army, you play a guy. And pretty soon, we were fighting Chimera and dragons, and we never looked back. Awesome, awesome. That's it. Um, yeah, you know, sadly, I didn't, you know, I came to the gaming scene much, 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 much later than you guys. Uh, but, you know, the, that spirit is still here, as, as you can plainly see. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, you know, you, you've written um, an excellent trilogy of adventures for Numenera called The Sun Below. And the titles in that series are, you know, The City on the Edge, uh, The Sleeping Lady, or just Sleeping Lady. Oh, sorry if I you know, missaid that. Sleeping Lady, yeah. yeah and, and of course, the latest one, uh, How the Light Gets In. Can you tell us a little bit about this series of adventures and uh, what makes them different from other Numenera adventures? Cool, yeah. So... I love Numenera. I love the Ninth World, but I wrote the first one because something bothered me. Um, in the in the way they uh, described the um, the steadfast, slavery is everywhere. And I thought, is this like a game that is about slavery? And I thought, no, it's not. Well, that bothers me. If I if there's a lot of slavery, I want to have a slavery book. First thing. So my first adventure is a slavery boat. 
and everybody, you know, I wanted to be, you know, Harriet Tubman going in and freeing people. And so that's what I did for the first adventure. And, but most people kind of ignore that. I think Monty was like, he reads uh, the same kind of books I read, like uh, uh, the Book of the New Sun. And that had a kind of an ancient world slavery thing going on. But I don't find that works in a role playing game because uh, for me, so I do now what most other GMs do. I pretend that, well, I don't pretend, I just in my version of the ninth world and every GM has their own version. I just, there is no, there, the world isn't full of slavery. I, I just ignore, I just say, no, it doesn't, doesn't happen because we're not focusing on that. Uh, but when I do have that as an issue, I focus on that. That was, that's like, you know, um, so anyway, that's, that's the first one. They, they go underground and they find there's a sun below the surface of the ninth world. And that's why it's the sun below. And there they meet uh, a, a city of slavers and slaves and they join a slave revolt. And um, and crazy things happen because it's Numenera, and uh, and so and I mean it's crazy. There's a sun under the ground, um, and that's the whole purpose of the Sun Below series. And then the second one uh, was based on fairy tales. There's a there's a fairy tale trope. It's uh, about women called Mother Maiden Crone. There's three different, you know. Uh, she's a mother, she's a maiden, or she's a crone. And so I created a mother maiden crone as one, well, slight spoiler, as one weird entity. And that is the sleeping lady. And she's waking up and, um, and things are happening. Uh, <clears throat> so that is a return to the world of the sun below. If you play the first, if you play them in order, and uh, <clears throat> uh, there's, a, th there's a moon that follows the sun below and uh it can be and that moon can become the enemy or the ally of the player characters uh and then the last one somebody steals the sun and you know if somebody steals your son you're going to be kind of pissed off and so um there's a big uh uh uh, mess because everybody down below in the world below has to come up to the surface but the surface is already populated so all these people are sh showing up and and it's causing this big thing so the players are, are going to go have to find where they took the sun below and they and these people are transdimensional the thieves the sun thieves and they have the powers of gods and so the players are going to have to follow through multiple dimensions uh, God, I think like seven dimensions, uh, and uh, and and steal the sun back, and <laughs> uh, so you know, uh, I wanted it to be over the top, and I, I think it is. Uh, with that description, I think you kind of nailed it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, they sound like very fascinating adventures, and now I'm curious about uh, we might have to get our sun below on. <laughs> well, but I, I have, have, I read I have the, a couple. I read okay. the first, well, I was just saying, I read the, the actually I read him out of order because I read how the light gets in because he was talking about it on the server, you know. Did he, right, so, yeah, it's a new one. Yeah, so I've read that one, but now I'm going to go back and read the other two because now, you know, who knows what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I, I was sold on a lot of crazy things are happening. I was like, okay, that's <laughs> my sort of game. But I have a couple questions directly related to the um, trilogy is, was this um, your play group's adventure? Then you wrote an adventure around it? You know, like you, you converted a home game? Or was uh, this well, something out of your own creation? Just uh, Well, my home game was my play test group. Oh, okay. So I, I knew I was going to publish it. Um, and and I, I set the, the poor sad souls into it um and uh so yeah uh so it uh, when you're a writer your home team becomes your play test group and <laughs> so as yeah. and uh so uh i just want to mention that the first one um the sun below that's how the light gets in that is free i i set that to free at the beginning of the pandemic and awesome. in, until awesome. we are all vaccinated, it will remain free. So go to drive through, pick it up for free. Cost nice. zero. Oh, awesome. Yeah. yeah. And while you're there, pick up the other two adventures. Yes. 
support John. Yeah. He's a great guy and um and deserves some support. And we'll definitely have the links to those down below yeah. uh, in the description <laughs> for everyone to check out. <laughs> No, yeah, I mean that's awesome, John. So we're gonna jump right back into these questions for you. You know, now you know most of our listeners know that Numer Numenera isn't part of the uh, Cypher Creator Program, and you were one of the only people or few people that we know of companies that are licensed to create Numenera products. Can you tell us how you managed to secure a deal like that with MCG? Um, <clears throat> I asked. <laughs> <laughs> Um, there, there, there's a small, uh, I mean, it costs a little bit, but it's, it's not big. Um, you, you pay a lot more for art than, uh, than, than the cost for the license. Um, and, and you need permission. Uh, you can't just do it. Um, so Charles is involved. Uh, uh, he's in charge of all that. And, uh, uh, so, uh, I was one of the first licensees out there. And uh, I guess I, I think they like what I do, so they've been happy to give me more licenses. <laughs> F funny story on a side note: when John, when me and you first started communicating back and forth about you know arranging the interview, you know, I, I the first thing I did was of course you know I researched all your back products, and then I noticed that you had Numenera like written Numenera on the drive-through. So I, I had to contact Darcy and say, hey, is this on the up and up? You know, <laughs> and she was like, no, John's great. Don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> you know, because, you know, we, we, you know we, we, we have a great relationship with Monica Gage. Yeah. And we wouldn't want to, you know, mess that up in any no. way. But, but I did have to contact Darcy. Yeah, and we, we were like, uh, wait a minute. This is Numenera, and that's not part of the theater program. <laughs> well, you know, a funny story is uh, before... Monty Cook hired Darcy. I asked her if she wanted to write for me. Oh, wow. I, I think she got a better job. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, she, she's doing awesome work now. She has Burn Bright, you know, yeah. World 20 game. So she, you know, she's really <laughs> expanding her gaming chops. Yeah, definitely. So, great job, Darcy. We love you. Yeah. So that's great, though. So, uh, um, so we'll move it on to the next question. You know, it's obvious that, you know, you have a lot of experience designing adventures for several different RPG companies and several different systems. So could you um, talk a little bit about your, your experience designing for other systems and, um, how does that system affect you when you're designing for Cypher system and Numenera in particular? That, that's a good question. Um, I like to design by thieving by stealing uh, from other systems. Uh, and so I uh, take great gaming ideas that are portable. Not all great gaming ideas are portable, uh, <laughs> but I, I move them uh, uh, to other systems if, if it will help with the adventure, the source book, whatever I'm writing. So for example, I love, love, love montages. Um, <laughs> And so I stole them from 13th Age, and I don't know where they stole them, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, you'll see a at least one montage in each of my Sun Below adventures. Um, are you guys all familiar with montages? Yes, oh, yeah. absolutely. Oh, right. well, not me 100%. You know, I don't have as much <laughs> gaming material. Yeah. I'm All right, right I'll, I'll, I'll give you the like, 30 seconds. Oh, go on, if, go on. If, yeah. if you ever seen any... Uh, you know, Karate Kid movie or 1980s film. Like yeah. I know, I know, I know what a montage is in the context of media, <laughs> but I don't know about it in the context of maybe game mechanics. If there are game any. mechanics, okay. Uh, Here, here's the the quick overview. Um, so you want to do something that if you did it all with everybody taking turns and followed the normal rules, it would take like an hour, but you only want five minutes. So we're gonna go on uh, a trip across the Black Riage, and I don't want to just hand wave and say you get to the other side. I want it to be somewhat memorable, but five minutes. So I'll, I'll start with somebody at the table and I say, give me a problem as your group crosses the black riage. And, uh, but don't tell me how you solve it. The guy sitting to your left or the woman sitting to your left is going to solve that problem. Don't say how they solve it. So they come up with something like, um, there's a forest fire. And then the next person goes, okay, you're gonna solve this forest fire and no dice will be rolled. 
you will just solve it. It might be something on your character sheet. It might not. Just try to keep as serious as the rest of the campaign is, because you can make it super silly. And that's great if you have a super silly campaign. But you know, you know, if it's a serious campaign, keep it on the on that kind of seriousness. And so the person goes, well, uh, the, as the fire gets closer, I find a secret tunnel that goes under the forest, so we don't get burned. And that, and I go, great. You you are the coolest you found that forest and you're going through the tunnel but then there's another problem what is it and they make up a problem and the person to their left solves it until you go around the table everybody creates a problem everybody solves a problem and at the end you kind of like re recapitulate you know wow that was really hard you solved all these problems but now you see the that your destination is in sight and then boom you know, it took five minutes, but it, it's better than just saying, oh, you traveled and you were there. Uh, so it's and you can do that for other things. How did how did we meet? You know, well, uh, or how do we how is everybody connected to this crazy fisherman with giant eyeballs? Um, and uh, and so you use this as a way also for shared world building and any cool idea the players come up with that really strikes. Write it down. And then later throw it back at the players, <laughs> especially I, I, in a GM intrusion. <laughs> I, I really love that because um, in one way you, you're helping players improve on their improv chops without even them knowing it. You know, it's like I'm going to give you an improv exercise in the middle of the game. It's totally improv. Yes. Yeah, that that's beautiful. I mean, I, I, I'm going to just add one more question to this, but, you know, what are some of the advantages to writing a, an adventure solely for, you know, a system as modular as Cypher system? Oh, God, there's, other system? there's so many. Well, for one thing, like like compared to D&D, right? Um, if you're writing an adventure, when I all of my adventures are for all tiers, right? You can't do that mm -hmm. for D&D. You right. can't have something that works for a 20th level and a first level character. But I, I, I do it for uh, a first tier and a sixth tier character really without breaking a sweat. Um, I, uh, all my stats, instead of having one level, I have three levels. The first one is for first and second tier, then a third and fourth tier number, and then the fifth and sixth tier number. And so no matter who you are and where your players are, grab it and go, you know? Um, and uh, so that is, that's that's wonderful. There are um, uh, an another great thing for designing for the cipher system is how easy it is to create creatures, right? Oh, if oh, you ever make a, a a stat block for say uh, Pathfinder, you know that that's like a weekend. <laughs> yeah. In, in cipher character. system, it's like thirty seconds. You know? <laughs> All of fifteen seconds. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm slow, so I said thirty, but yeah. <laughs> oh man, but that that's so awesome! Like I, I've oh, never heard of. So, um, I, don't, I don't think we mentioned this earlier, but um, just for the record, so everyone knows, John has written for 5e, he's, he's written for 13th Age, he's written for Gumshoe, so his experience is, covers way more than just Cypher System. <laughs> we didn't mention that at the very beginning, but I thought it was it's a poignant that we mention it now. Yeah, it's yeah. definitely yeah. Worth, worth mentioning. But what, what I was yeah. going to say was that um, it's just so awesome because um, hearing you speak about this stuff, because I've never... Because I, I usually when I run a, run a one shot, I'm always thinking of a hey, it's gonna be tier one or tier two. I've never considered kind of doing it in that sort of way where you kind of, hey, you can have one to two tier, then three to four, and like just have slightly different stat blocks for your scenarios, and you're good to go. Like that's I never thought of that. So awesome. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh <laughs> Yeah, I, I that, that that's in the first adventure and i just kept running with it um it's and it, it's it's wonderful some games like gumshoe they don't have levels or tiers and so that's uh easy um my gumshoe adventure is actually still i'm, I'm still uh, working on it so it's not published yet uh, <laughs> but it's going to be uh, gumshoe in space and um it, nice it, it awesome. should be crazy um <clears throat> so uh yeah and i one of the things i steal from gumshoe and put in my uh, Numenera games is the idea that all the important clues are always found by the players. You cannot make a bad roll, you know, like with intellect perception and miss the core clue that'll get you to the next step. You always find them. Yeah, that, 
that's awesome. I was actually going to ask, our next question here is, um, you know, now that we're speaking more about 13th Age Gumshoe, um, you know, you enjoy those quite a lot. You, you've written for them. What are some mechanics or philosophies, kind of like the montages or the clue finding, that you that, that translate well into that, you know, the cipher mentality or mob mindset? Right. Well, 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 those are two that I definitely stole. Um, in the latest uh, adventure, That's How the Light Gets In, I, I, I don't call them that, but I basically put in skill challenges, uh, which were, came in fourth edition D&D, &D, and they were kind of clunky and didn't work as well as I wanted them to, but I love the concept. And they've kind of uh, been perfected, at least in my uh, of opinion in 13th age and so I, I i stole those and so when you're trying to if the players want to sneak aboard the ship um uh then they have to it's not just one roll it's like well first they have to get close then they have to like uh come up with the disguise and they you know they have to go through a number of steps and uh at each step i can throw a, a gm intrusion <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh could i talk a little bit about my writing style for that last adventure. Sure. Yeah, go for it. So I, I know uh, you guys write, and uh, there's a, a fiction technique called um, uh, the seven plot points. And you start by writing the end, the climax, then you write the beginning, then you write the middle, and then you, then you go in between and another in between. And, uh, and then you have these, basically, it's a quick outline of, of the high points of your plot. So I did that for, that's how the light gets in him, but I did it three times. I did it for players that want to kick butt and fight everything they can mm -hmm. see. I did it for sneaky types that want to get in there with stealth and be like, you know, uh, go in there and, and be mission impossible. And then I did it for the BSers, because that's how I play, yeah. um, <laughs> who just want to talk their way in and out of all problems. And then, uh, and so in that adventure, every big, horrible plot point that you got to get by, you, you have at least those three ways to do it spelled out in the adventure. And, and most groups are not going to all do the same thing every time. But that way, it's, it's there for the game master. So if the players are getting sneaky or it's tired and they're at the end of the night, they just want to punch something because they had a bad day at work, you know, <laughs> those options are there. And... Uh, <clears throat> So uh, I mean that's that's great game design because I, I I think um a lot of particularly a lot of the older adventures they were too too like um strict on the fact that you needed a particular style of group you know like you need you need or you needed the air quotes perfect party you right. know, to ma maximize this written adventure so when you know when you give the GM options that any group you know. You, if you could run a game with four Dells and still, you know, come, yeah. you know, still run through the adventure and have an enjoyable time, you know, you you don't need an optimized party. That that's a great thing. It is a great thing, and that's a really strength of Cipher system. You know, yeah. it, a lot of people come from D and D to Cipher, and they go, "Oh God, who has to be the cleric?" And yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> and no one yeah. exactly. Uh, and uh, yeah, and so everybody can be who they want to be, um, mm -hmm. which is so cool. Uh, mm -hmm. The uh, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, no, I'm I'm here just enjoying the conversation. It's mm -hmm. great stuff. So you know, we're talking about all these great adventures and designing ideas and so on and so forth. Do you have any advice that you would give to any of our listeners who might, you know, want to get into adventure design and what are some of the pitfalls to avoid when trying to break in? Right. Okay. So great question. The, some people, um, are, have trained themselves like from high school or college to be writers. You know, they, 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 they took those extra English classes and all that. I did not do that. <laughs> I, I used to write computer programming code in a language called C++ and it is gobbledygook and it has nothing and it is not nobody wants to read that. Um, and so I had I basically started taking writing classes at the local community colleges, local uh, 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 colleges or, or workshops or at conventions. Um, and because I, I needed that skill I needed to be able to because I wanted to so badly but I, I I knew I was bad at it 
Uh, in fact, one of my writing teachers was somebody called Shauna Germain, you may have heard of. <laughs> and uh, I, I took her fairy tale writing class, and uh, <clears throat> which is kind of where the idea for the mother maiden crone idea came out of uh, for Sleeping Lady. And so I took a bunch of writing classes. Uh, also, there's great writing podcasts. One of my favorite is Writing Excuses. And they always oh. say, it's only 15 minutes long because <laughs> you don't have much time and we're not that smart. And <laughs> and, and that is where I, I picked up the, uh, uh, the seven uh, plot point structure uh, that I've started using in gaming. And that's just a, a writing for, you know, fiction. But if you can write fiction, uh, then that helps a lot for writing RPGs. Um, because you need to write clearly, you need to uh, you need to communicate. The you know you're writing basically for the game master, and you have you have to make sure that what is in your head, which is great, mm -hmm. actually gets on the page because the page can be lame. <laughs> <You know? laughs> that is one hundred percent facts. Um, I was uh, you know I was discussing how I structure my adventures to a friend of mine who's like a. Uh, kind of a beginner GM but I just ran him through the cypher system but he was trying to just write a story for D&D &D. and um, you know I had to explain to him you know um, when I wrote my notes for his game it was like a space horror game he was like he was asking me like you know how, how did you come up with the backstory for the ship how did you dis do this and that I was like I just had three sentences on my page so my <laughs> page looked very lame I was just able to come up with the story on the fly oh, and, yeah. and he's just like but how, like um how do you do that without a detailed set of notes? And that's the that's the mindset of some gyms. They do need that in their pre-written adventures. And yeah, yeah, it's really important to get all the cool bits from here down there so right. that other people can see it because not everybody's minds work the same way. Yes, <laughs> exactly. And 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 your the notes that work for you um, don't work for everybody. So uh, yeah, nobody wants to see my notes. That's for sure. Well, well that's what I was going to say, John. I mean, you and I come from a, an entirely different era of gaming, and you know, I remember looking at you know the books and how they were structured, and then the ideas that were put forth. You know, and for me, I don't. And probably the same thing for you. It was always, oh, this is just enough to get me going. This right. is the inspiration, you know what I'm saying? And I think that's what makes Monty Cook games such a, a pleasure for us because it takes us back to those days. Oh yeah. Oh, you know, you, you didn't have the entire world detailed out. You didn't, you know, so we learned a tech we learned that technique. Right. What we what we had to work with. And and I you know, Monty on purpose, he left so much of the right. ninth world up for the game masters and the players to make up. I was so happy he never got a shovel, because yeah. if, if he went under, if he had another underworld thing, I was going to yeah. go, oh gosh, what if he digs in the same place I dug? But, <laughs> but you see, I mean, that's the thing, and there's so much that was open because look, yeah. he gave you, he gave you into the deep, he gave you into the right. outside, he gave you, you know, into the night, and still never touched where you were at, you right. know. And the stuff that other people were doing. I know stuff that I, ideas that I have had that I've done in the ninth world, nobody does. Just what Al did the other week. I don't know if you saw our little game that we ran, but mm -hmm. he combined the Genesis and, you know, the ninth world. It was great. Yeah. It was phenomenal. And it's it's because it's there's so much information, but it's still a whole world left for you to explore. Exactly. Yes. I Oh, I... I, before I forget to say it, I just want to say that uh, in the latest adventure, uh, I wasn't the only writer. I, somebody, uh, a couple you've interviewed, uh, Acer and Megan Tolentino. Oh, yes, uh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Uh, I was really impressed with uh, Megan's uh, fantasy uh, flavor that she did. So I had her do a flavor for this, and then Acer said, "Well, can I do?" And I, yeah, 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 do, you know, do as much as you guys want. And yeah. and so a lot of my ciphers and artifacts and uh, and and crazy hijinks uh, um, uh, uh, come from those two, and it, including a, a flavor for somebody that is used to hopping between dimensions. Nice. Nice. I mean, so, not, not only are they great game designers and adventure designers, 
they're great podcasters and yes. most importantly they're great people yeah, yeah. They, they're definitely friends of the show they're super yeah. awesome I mean, since we're speaking on Numenera, um, do you have a favorite Numenera book or product? And what do you think of the changes made with Discovery and Destiny compared to the original version? Wow. Um, you know, it's usually the one I'm reading is the one that's my favorite. Uh, <laughs> uh, but um, I, 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 li- I love the, the community building that they threw into Destiny. Um, I, 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 uh, I've used that and had a lot of fun with that. Um, the, uh, what's my favorite? Um, I love, well, I love transdimensionalism. So, uh, 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 the ultra terrestrial, the ultra terrestrial. And I'm trying to, what was the name of that book? It's not into the deep. That was the water book. Into the outside. Into the outside. And uh, yeah, I, I I took a lot of inspiration from that. Um, <clears throat> but I uh, I'm just amazed at their books. I work really hard on my layout. Oh, by the way, being a computer programmer does not help you do layout. Um, <laughs> so what I do is I look what Bear does, right? Yeah. And Bear's got the most beautiful books in all of yeah. role playing. And so I try to copy that and I fail. I, I, I get 5% of cool, as cool as Bear does. And I'm still better than the rest of the competition. You know, I mean, cause he is that good. Um, and uh, so uh, it is, uh, I, I know you, I, I watched your uh, interview with Bear and uh, he's so nice. I, public, I was working on something and I go, I'm doing something. Here's a screenshot. I don't know what I'm doing with layout. <laughs> and Bear says, "Oh, here's how you fix it." Yeah, I didn't ask. Awesome. He just showed up, <laughs> and boom. And I, I we've never met in real life. We're yeah. just internet friends. And uh, um, you know, he's so kind. Every everybody at at Monty Cook has been I was uh, just very supportive. Say that. Yeah, I was just gonna yeah. say that everybody at Monty Cook has basically that same, you know, here. Let me show you spirit yeah, or you here. Know. Let me help you or, you know, yeah, let me help you. Awesome. Saying, let me help you. Let me show you. I mean, uh, 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 Sean K. Reynolds just did similar thing for me, John. He basically did a developer's pass on a piece of my work. Nice. You know, and yeah, so I'm actually retooling it now and using that same advice for like the next project I right. work on because it's like, what did you, did Sean said that? Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it goes without saying they've helped us tremendously uh, we we wouldn't have a youtube or a discord server if it wasn't for the help of monica games because they yeah. just helped us every step of the way they're yeah. incredible they, they definitely are and, um, you know you know one of the great things about writing for the cypher system um is the fans right they have a great fan group i mean oh, yeah, i write sure. for other game systems and i i love those other games but there's something very special about this fan group yeah, it's so yeah. accepting. Well, I mean, our Discord server just shows that with over 3,300 people on it. So, you know, yeah. and, like steadily growing. <laughs> but, um, yeah, um, so we know that Numenera is one of your most liked settings, but is it your favorite setting for Monty Cook Games? And uh, oh, follow Predation, Boot. of course. Hello. Oh, okay. Uh, That's an awesome <laughs> answer. But um, or you know, maybe it might be for Predation. But do you have any plans to make any or do any projects involving any of their other settings besides Numenera? Um, uh, not at the moment. I don't. I don't know that they even have licenses for uh, those other settings. Uh, it's an interesting idea. I could take it up with them. You should definitely uh, ask about Predation. <laughs> you said earlier you just asked. You know, just yeah, that's true. Like, that's true. It's like, so what um, about that predation license? If you've seen any of our videos, you know how we feel about predation. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but when I ran predation for my group, um, I, I I actually threw in some of the monsters that uh, or and the races that show up in the, uh, in my latest Numenera adventure because you can do that with Cypher yeah. System, right? Yes. It's easy. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh anyway you know how like the big thing is here comes the asteroid so i I made that the big thing i go you're all gonna die there's no (laughs) way out unless you figure it out and you know what are you gonna do jump into outer space and punch the asteroid i mean you figure it out and so they decided 
to go to another dimension and, right. and bring all the humans with them. And so where they went was into the strange. We went to the uh, fa <laughs> fantasy world uh, <laughs> uh, that Bruce made, and that is where they were. Oh, they uh -oh. relocated all the people from predation. Um, nice. and so that, that was a lot of fun. Because... I mean, it, it's funny you say that because we always say that, you know, all the settings, all the Monica games book, they just supplements for the same yeah, cipher system. Exactly. The, the, you know, Numenera, the strange, it doesn't matter. They they so interchangeable. You know, there's very few tweaking you have to do to any of the setting books to incorporate it into whatever, you know, the setting books are you're just running. good. Yeah. You know, yeah. they're just good right. stuff. Oh, yeah. So, you know, with all that being said, we're talking about this great stuff. What can we look forward to in the future from, you know, John W.S. Martin and Dread Unicorn Games? You know? Well, uh, like I said, I'm, I'm just finishing up a, uh, a, a gumshoe adventure uh, that takes place. Um, uh, the uh, adventurers are uh, called to a planet because a, uh, a bunch of archaeologists have disappeared. And when they get there, they're getting the runaround from the government and what what they don't understand at first but spoiler um the government has been taken they're, they're turning into pod people right so uh there are these uh, uh people from another uh basically survivors of their own culture who have been turned into these crazy monsters uh nice. shape-changing monsters and so they have to deal with that and, um you ever see annihilation or read the book yes it's yes. kind of based on that uh with uh, some crazy politics thrown in and uh, a good, yeah uh, hopefully a good I, I, it's been well play tested I, I think that's going to be good and I'm, I was just going to publish it by myself but um, the people who run Gumshoe that's Paul Grain Press over in um, mm -hmm. uh, England and Ireland mm -hmm. they are doing a, a contest and so if if I win the contest they'll do all the publishing for me so oh, I don't have to you know nice. so uh, no. I'll enter it in the contest, and if and if it doesn't win, then I'll do my own publishing. Um, is, is a is it a voting contest where we could do a voting? I wish no, <laughs> no, no. I, uh, well, yes, but only one person gets a vote. Uh, <laughs> that's what, what Robin Laws, who actually created Gumshoe in the first place. Uh, so you know, and that's a question I had, John. Maybe you could answer it. Is that the same Robin Laws that did Feng Shui? Yes. Okay. Yes. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, which is another great game. Yes. Um, <clears throat> I, I just finished watching Umbrella Academy, so I was about to suggest we could jump into time, kidnap them, and bring them back to have them pick your game. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So, sorry, I have Umbrella Academy stuck on my Yeah, I haven't done No spoilers, I'm still watching season two. Uh, yeah, I'm about halfway done with it. Yeah, me too. Oh, um, I finished it today. It's awesome. Oh, I, I, yeah, it's been great. I, I have whenever I get on the exercise bike, that's that's my thing. Like, that keeps me exercising because I oh you can't watch any more Umbrella Academy if you don't get on the bike. <laughs> that's a good motivator. It yeah. is. It's exactly. real, it works for me. Um, yeah, so I'm working. Uh, that should be done pretty soon. And then I I've been playtesting ideas that are going to go into a big Kickstarter, a uh, fantasy. Kind of Atlantis, but it's called Palantis, so it's way better. It has a P instead of an A. <laughs> and, um, Empires of Palantis, and I'm gonna uh, kickstart that and dual system it. I'll have a version for fifth edition and a version for thirteenth age. And uh, oh, awesome. if you guys are unfamiliar with thirteenth age, it's very improv D and D kind of game. So okay. it really pushes the improv. Well, I mean, that's where I stole the. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, the montage idea so it's got a lot of improv ideas in it and so um if uh, uh if you're used to improv like you are if you play a lot of cypher system it's uh, i think it's the, the coolest uh, uh D, D. but i like regular D, &D too so yeah, I, yeah. when i first read 13 age I, I what i envisioned was it's fourth edition done right yes that's what that's how i viewed it when i read, when I first read it <laughs> I was like, oh, hey, this is like fourth edition, uh, a better version of fourth edition. Right. You know? Yeah. And w w with a lot of the dumb parts taken away. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah. So anyway, um, uh, and then after that, who knows? Uh, maybe no. I should send a letter to Money Cook Games or Predation. Predation. <laughs> Predation. I know that would be that would be so cool. I don't know if they're interested in licensing, but. Uh, oh. That would be great. But, but I, 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 just go to the site. Yeah, no, that's not on there. 
Yeah, right. No. Gotta get a license. Uh, yeah. But yeah, those are the 13th Age and uh, Gumshore. Definitely some games I should pick up. I've, you know, again, I'm a newer GM compared to these guys, or newer just in the scene in general. Uh, so I've been trying to read more books recently. Like, I've read The Genesis, Shadow of the Demon Lord, mm-hmm. um, what is it, Mutant Crawl Classics. Uh, just trying to, you know, build my repertoire yeah. up a little bit. So uh, those sound like definitely two books I should definitely add up in there. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I read Gunch, Gumshoe, but I've never had the pleasure of playing it. Oh. I, I read the, the um, original. I've read the book, but never yeah. played either. Yeah. I, I have, um, uh, well, I, I played a lot of it, and the best published campaign that I didn't publish. Uh, <laughs> the, I mean, you always think your own stuff is the best because you, you, you're half improving the whole time, right? Uh, and it was it was one for Gumshoe? It's called Dracula Dossier, and it's a it's a I, modern Dracula game. And everybody's like a Jason Bourne style super spy, and uh, and they just find out that Dracula's real, and Dracula just found out that they found out, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 he's kind of pissed. And uh, so it's it, that was such a great campaign because it's not like anybody else's published stuff. It's it's a whole it's a published campaign full of improv technique. It, instead awesome. of like saying here's an npc it's like here's a name and here's three different personalities that might go with that game name depending on what you need to improv at the moment yeah that's uh, awesome actually and the same thing with places and, and items it was like multiple explanations for everything and it, you were just like oh i think we need to stir things up i think this person they think is nice is actually bad and boom, they're bad and <laughs> choose your own got path. all the stats for the bad stuff it's uh, basically yeah. choose your own path for the gm <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's yeah. Awesome. It, it, yeah. So instead, you know, like, you know, I, I mean, my stuff, I try to keep it wide open so people can improv. But uh, but this was like to the extreme and I loved it. Yeah, it was good stuff. I read I read that. Yeah, I was very familiar with the Dracula. Oh, oh well, you should play it sometime. Off. All right, John. So you finished the easy questions. We got. Uh oh. We got the easy questions out of the way, you know, it's, you know, it's time to, you know, sit in the chair and concentrate because here's where we dig deep, deep, deep into your soul, right? And we <laughs> pull out your essence. We'll stretch it out across the table for the whole world to see. These are our rapid fire questions. They- uh uh-uh. Quick, you know, one yeah. word answer responses, or you could elaborate if you um, you choose to, and you know, go in further. But we'll let Al kick it off with our first rapid fire question. Are you ready, John? Ready. <laughs> All right. So, player or GM? GM. Hello. <laughs> Pool punches or TPK? Neither. Um, <clears throat> I guess pulled punches, but I can I explain? Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. All right. I always set it up so that uh, uh, it always feels like a TPK, but it, but it, it's never a TPK. So I, I'm not actually pulling punches. I I, I pulled those punches in the design, uh, <laughs> but 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 boy, do I like beat people up and and cut their arms off a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so abuse. Yes. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Thank you. Your local <laughs> PD will be at your door the next <laughs> week. <laughs> Online or in-person gaming? Oh, please. Can I go back to in-person? Oh, man. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm doing a lot what of online that? now, but yeah. but yeah. In-person? What is that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Oh, man. All right. So announce the difficulty number or keep it a secret. Secret. Oh. Nice. You were the first few people that said that. Salty or sweet snacks at the gaming table? Salty until everybody gets tired. <laughs> RP or combat? I like them both, but RP. Uh, PDFs or physical books? Well, if I can't say both, I'm going to say PDF so I can look stuff up and search it. Uh, pen and paper, notes, or digital? Digital, mostly. <laughs> <laughs> Pre-written adventures or original content? Uh, well, I, I do mostly original, but I love learning from other people's pre-written adventures. So I'm always, I, I'm doing like a third pre-written from other people so I can like copy them and steal all their good ideas. Pilfering. Pilfering. It's just called pilfering. Pilfering, yes. Yeah, pilfering's that, that's important. A, 
that's essentially what we do at Gen Con. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we'll take a third of the adventure. They'll be like, hey, we're going to give you some entirely new. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Yo, yeah would you, you survive the rock? You survive the <laughs> So, John, yeah. you know what? Once again, you know, uh, does it, well, before I even start all of that stuff, does anybody else have anything else to say? Guys, you got any uh, closing statements, remarks you want to, you know, make, uh, Al? No, um, just, you know, thank you so much, John, for coming on. But, you know, for our viewers out there who want to, you know, look at your stuff at home, how can they do that? Twitter, Facebook, like, where where can they find your stuff? Like, Dread uh, Unicorn uh, Games. Facebook, Dread Unicorn Games is probably the best place. Also, I'm on, I'm on Twitter, but I'm per, uh, I'm on Facebook more. Uh, <laughs> so if it's super important, I'll also put it up on Twitter. But uh, follow Dread Unicorn Games on Facebook. Uh, nice. If you want to follow me, you can. But uh, then you'll hear about my dog and my politics, and you don't want to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony, anything? Uh, um, what else? All your products are on Drive to RPG, correct? Or could they correct them as well from your website? Uh, no, my website basically just points back to our uh, Drive Through RPG, um, and uh, <clears throat> for my size company, that makes sense. Yeah, um, for sure. You know, if for Money Cook, that would not make sense. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I just want to say that, um you know, it was a pleasure to get in the um, chat with you, John. I know me and you have been uh, Discord buddies for a yeah. couple of months now, but uh, it was, you know, it was a great pleasure to meet you in, in person, cause, or COVID <laughs> person. <laughs> but, so, you know, and you're just an awesome person, and um I, I wish you nothing but the best. And I hope our viewers go out and support, you know, Dread Unicorn Games, because, you know, we love we love to highlight all the wonderful things people are doing in the cypher community and you on top of that hill so we you know we want to highlight you as well oh uh, and thank you so much for letting me on your show i love it well john you know that's and that's what we're here for man we want people to know the community we want people to be able to interact and you know get a feel you know we we feel like we've got the best rpg community online you know we do we know we do bar none we love having guys <laughs> like you know like yourself yeah, yeah. on so do you have any final thoughts for our viewers out there? Anything you want to tell the, you know, the, the cypher heads? Oh, cypher heads, uh, just, you know, keep on enjoying. And, and, and remember, it's your world. You can do whatever you want in it. Okay, awesome. All right. So everybody, you know what? That's been our interview today with John W.S. Martin of Dread Unicorn Games. It's awesome to have you here. And my final thoughts are very simple. You know what? Come back, come see us, run some games for us. You know what? Run something on the server. Stuff is going on all the time, and just continue to enjoy and be great. Or perhaps maybe run one of your adventures on our YouTube channel with, with yeah. the Cypher Unlimited guys. We can do that we'll, as well. We'll definitely play. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> good idea. <laughs> but before Dean closes us out, you know, um, if you like us and you like what we do, and you know, you want to support us in a little way, we have we have a Kofi set up. Like we always say in every one of our videos, our content will always be free, but if you, um, it helps us out with the little things like Zoom costs and stuff like that. Or you could visit our online store and pick up this cool Cypher Unlimited swag you see here. Every little bit helps us and we truly appreciate it. And last but not least, please like, share, and subscribe to our videos. Cause you know, the more people that do that, the, the more viewers we reach out to and you know, we'll build a bigger audience. And at the end of the, day we want we want to build the biggest audience as possible because like what dean said the cypher unlimited discord community is the greatest most accepting inclusive community there is so if you know um you want to join that community the link is down below as well and come join us and game with us we love you guys Thanks. come cypher with us yeah, yeah. Uh, and yeah um thank you guys again so much for watching thank you uh again john for coming on it was a blast talking i got some wonderful insights on some wonderful techniques um you know like the montages and such you know it's amazing amazing stuff um but yeah you know again thank you everyone and uh from us at the cu we will see you later bye